Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Step by Step. This time we're going to be using Trevenant Garbodor like normal and playing against a Tapu Koko deck. So we've got two Guardians Rising decks, brand new decks that have only been legal for, or only been released for two days. They're not legal for almost another two weeks, so it's awesome to get some early testing in here. So I really like the Trevenant Garbodor concept. If you haven't watched any of the other Trevenant Garbodor videos yet, the concept is to force your opponent to freak out when they see Phantom and Trevenant and get rid of all their item cards and then make them pay for that by using Garbodor. If they're smart and they don't do that, then you try to get your two shots and as the game with Trevenant and as the game goes along, then clean up with Garbodor at the end, all while just giving up one prize. So um, I think you'll really enjoy this video. The opponent leads with Jolteon, which doesn't matter to this deck at all because Jolteon just prevents basics from attacking it and uh, we don't attack with any basics in this deck because as I've mentioned I'm still waiting for my Tapu Leles. They should be able to, I'll get the code cards for them that should be here um, within a, a day or two so we'll update the deck but you're going to see a really good video and a really good match even without Tapu Lele which just speaks to how powerful the Garbodor deck is. So the point of my opponent's deck, um, Jolteon, Raikou, and Tapu Koko, is to accelerate energies with Max Elixir, uh, attack for a lot of damage with Raikou, only giving up one prize whenever Raikou is knocked out, so it trades very favorably, favorably, and then to switch in the Tapu Koko, and um, move all the energies to Tapu Koko, put Tapu Koko in the active, and keep si doing that cycle. Um, so they will keep fresh and healthy. Tapu Koko is attacking all game. So we'll see this happen here. Now the cool thing about this, the cool thing about playing Trevenant in general with Garbodor is that, I mean, he's playing all his item cards right now because he doesn't want to have them in his hand when I evolve to Trevenant, which is really cool um, because I'm going to have Garbodor. So we will just kind of see how this plays out. Now it's really nice. He's gotten some really good max elixirs going. Tapu Lele uh, could actually attack well, if it wasn't turn turn one. It could actually attack, so that's pretty cool. He's had a really good start. But I also I've seen two Max Elixirs, a Rescue Stretcher, an Ultra Ball, and a Trainer Mail hit the discard pile and a Field Blower. So Garbodor is already doing a ton of damage on turn one. Well, one Garbodor can come out onto the field. You know what I mean. I also really like the pronunciation of Garbodor as Garbodor, and I think that's how it should be pronounced, but I've called it Garbodor for probably five years now, <laughs> so it's just habit, um, but I really do like pronouncing it as Garbodor. Gar See, I can't even do it when I'm trying to. Garbodor. Um, but uh, yeah, I just keep accidentally calling it Garbodor. We all know deep down that it's Garbodor. So here we're going to Ultra Ball. I'm getting rid of the DCE because, I mean, really, I'm just going to be attacking with Garbodor, so who cares? So I'm going to go ahead and pull out a Trubbish. I was going to get a... So here's why I didn't get the Shaman. If I get the Shaman, the Psychic Energy and the Choice Band in my hand are pointless. I have a um, I have a Sycamore in my hand, so I might as well just go ahead and Sycamore and see what I get there. And, oh, look, I got a really awesome hand. So I now have three Phantoms and a Trubbish on the field. Um, the only thing that would really be bad next turn is if he is able to, um, retreat and Lissandra the Trubbish. That would be the worst thing that could happen next turn. Um, yeah, that would be bad. But other than that, I mean, we're set up pretty good at the moment. I mean, next turn, as long as that doesn't happen, we're going to have a turn two Garbodor, uh, ready to go. Uh, as you can see, I do run an Alolan Muck in the deck. I would like to be able to set that up more. Um, in the few games that I've played so far, I have not set up the Alolan Muck. Um, it's really kind of just hanging out in there for like Volcanion, um, things like that, because I um, obviously don't want them to get their Hoopas and Shaman. Steam up doesn't matter, so because you're going to one-shot me anyway, you know, I mean, steaming up doesn't doesn't do anything. The only time that it could matter is if they're attacking me and knocking me out with Baby Volcanion, and I'm preventing them from getting the one-shot using steam-ups by having Alolan Muck in place. So, it has some merit. Granted, I, I'm just testing on PTCGO, so I haven't had the opportunity to play against that yet. 
Um, so we'll see. So hey, he's gonna knock me out here, but he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine item cards in the discard pile already. So we are gonna get an easy one shot on Coco after he knocks out the Phantom. Oh, now he's got ten. The one cool thing about his deck that I'm seeing so far is that it does what it's supposed to do. It's turn two, and he's got five energies on the field. That's awesome. I, I really think that Tabu Coco is going to find its place in the format at some point in time and be a really good deck. But, I mean, geez, how many trainers do we have? Items do we have in the discard pile now? Like 12? It's got Hacklaws. That's a really cool name, and that's exactly how I'd say that attack if I ever play this deck. It's got Hacklaws for 130. Yep, so we got Trevenant, we got Garbodor, and I will probably play, hmm, which support are we going to play here? We're going to Sycamore, buy Psychic Energies. Better to not give him an extra card, plus I got a Trubbish, another Trubbish anyway, so I can keep attacking next turn. The Wally is in there because it's kind of nice to be able to accelerate the evolution, um, Let's just see how much damage. 270 damage, yikes. It's kind of nice to... Um, <laughs> 270 damage on turn two, by the way. Now, granted, he went super aggro. Like, you should never go super aggro when you see a Trubbish on the field. Um, but, I mean, that's so crazy. Turn two, 270 damage. But anyways, um, the Wally is in there because once I get the Lele's, I would like to be able to Lele for Wally and get... Like, let's say I'm going second, right? get a turn one Garbodor, a turn one Trevena, a turn one Alolan Muck, whatever it is I feel like I want. Even on even if I'm going first, a turn one Alolan Muck can be super devastating. Um, I might, because it's not super accessible without Lele, I might take it out. Oh, this is a cool play, by the way. Look, 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 powering up that Coco in one turn. I love it. I love it. That's super cool. So he's got two knockouts, and he's had three turns and gotten two knockouts. So it's it's moving speedy, you know. So I send up Trevenant just in case I don't get the psychic energy that I need. If I do, I can always um, retreat my uh, Trevenant. So NBD. And I was just saying something a second ago um, about accelerating to a lowland muck uh, with Wally. I might take it out, though, until I get my Lele's. Also, his deck is performing at optimal levels. It's just, I mean, look, Tabu Koko is at 210 HP right now. He heal he basically heals himself every turn when he brings in another Coco and swaps all the energies to it. It's cool. I like it. I just don't think it can keep up with Garbodor in the way that it's built at the moment. I also would be interested to see Tabu Koko running with Electrode in the deck. I know a lot of people have talked about that. Um, as we continue to keep the max elixir, of course, but just running electrode as well. I think that would be a very interesting way to play it. Also, I think he, granted, he's playing so fast, I don't know if he would be able to do things um, the way I'm about to describe, but I think it would have been cool to attack with Raikou and see if we can build up enough energy on Raikou to get knockouts on Garbodor, because it's really not good to trade two for one. <laughs> the game's going to be over pretty quick if we do that. Also, I run a Switch and a Floatstone and an Olympia, one of each. Um, once I get my Lele's, I keep talking about them. Um, once I get my Lele's, we're going to be able to um, search out our Switch card if we need it. So let's say someone tries to stall by bringing up Trevenant or whatever. I don't run a ton of Floatstones because with Field, field Blower out now, I don't want people to pull up like Trevenant or Shaman or whatever and then blow away my um blow away my the the retreat the float stone uh and then leave me stuck up there especially if I need to attach an energy to retreat or something or just be stuck up there permanently that would that would be terrible so I like running switch um I, I also think it helps with a couple of other things in the format at the moment maybe kind of outlier so he for okay so we're forfeiting here I'll pull things back a little bit to Kind of look at the field that he's got. Okay, cool. Here we are. 
So I t we we are on turn. Let's see. So I took two prizes, uh, on two turns. Didn't do anything. So this is turn four. So turn one, I was just getting set up. Turn two, I did 210 damage. Turn three, I did, or excuse me, 270. Turn three, I did 310 damage. So, I mean, there's really no point in him playing the game. Like, even if he gets the knockout here, um, all I have to do is throw up the Trevenant, put the float stone on it, play the trainer's mail so I can try to get a Ultra Ball, um, and I'll draw a card so I'll have 20 left in my deck, play the trainer mail, Try to get an Ultra Ball or something to get the Garbodor out. Shaman for other stuff that I need. So that would mean... So I'd have 20 cards in my deck. I would play the Trainer Mail, which would put me at 19. Um, I would play the Float Stone down, which would leave me with two cards in hand. I'd play the Shaman down and draw four. That would leave me with 15 cards. I would play the VS Seeker for Sycamore, um, which would leave me with eight cards. Yeah, uh, eight cards. So, I mean, I would pull all the way down to eight cards. So I feel really good about getting a Garbodor and a um, Psychic Energy next turn to go ahead and just finish off the game. Um, and honestly, he obviously doesn't have anything in play looking at his board right now where he could even knock out Garbodor this turn. The Tapu Lele would do one, two... Oh, yeah, okay, so if he... I'm sorry. I, no, 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 that Tapu Lele wouldn't knock it out. Tapu Lele would just do 60. So, um, yeah, there's nothing that could knock out Garbodor and play this turn anyway. So, uh, scooping was the right move. Uh, this Garbodor deck is super powerful. This is the second time we've seen an opponent scoop just within a few turns to it. Uh, so, hey, stay tuned, because this might be the deck to play. Thank you for watching.